a lot of the commercial stem ripping software that you can buy is actually based on open source software. If you're not aware, open source software is generally free to download and use. And in the case of DMUX, this stem spitting library, you need to have a bit of knowledge of Python, etc. It's actually running on screen at the moment. And if this kind of thing terrifies you, then you're not alone. In my experience, the overlap between people who are really comfortable with kind of computer programming stuff and musicians is a reasonably narrow one, but that shouldn't stop us accessing these kind of things. Previously, you'd probably have to pay for a solution such as RipX or Spectralayers, but it's also possible to do it with the subject of today's video, which is DMUX GUI. This is a program you can download and run on your own computer. It will give you pretty much as good stem splitting as is available anywhere. It runs locally, it runs quickly, and it has quite a few nice features. So let's take a look at it. So on screen, you can see the DMUX GUI GitHub project, and there's some useful notes, etc., in there, which are worth referring to if you have any issues. But the link in the description is to the releases page because that's what you're going to want to download. Now, there are three different downloads for Windows and two for Mac OS. For Windows, if you've got a modern NVIDIA GPU and you can look up what the compute capacity is on sites on the internet, then you're going to want the CUDA one. If you've got an Intel GPU, this is a modern Intel GPU, then you'd use this MKL one. Otherwise, download the CPU one. If you're not sure, download the CPU one. I think it may detect whether you've got these anyway and go down to that, but these are larger. Mac OS is fairly straightforward. If you've got an Apple Silicon CPU, then you'd use this one. Otherwise, you'd use the Rosetta one, and that will work for you. The assets are down here. So this is one of the things that often confuses people because they call it assets because reasons. But there you go. So we're just going to download the ARM64 one here. And you can see how much bigger the CUDA one in particular is here. You know, it's much bigger because it comes with much more, but it will be much quicker as I've tested in the past. Installation on macOS is pretty straightforward. As always, drag it in. Now, once you run it on macOS, you will see a warning saying that it can't be opened. Uh, this warning will vary depending on which version of macOS you're on, but you can go to security and privacy and on the page there, you can see typically this warning will appear and then you click open anyway. And then we should be in business. So when you download this on Windows, it comes as a 7z file. You'll need the 7zip program to unzip this. It's a free unzipping program works really well. It's flexible and uh, the one I use instead of WinRAR. And once you've unzipped it, which will take a while because it's quite big, you can just run it from the folder in your downloads folder or wherever, but I don't think that's a great idea, just leaving things strewn all over the place. I like things to be neat and where they should be, so I'm going to show you on screen the way that I would suggest to do this, but obviously you are free to do it however you want. So once it's fully unzipped, you will get a folder in this case, named DMAX GUI 11 CUDA. I'd suggest copying that folder, which is just Control and C. And then you want to go to your program files folder, which is typically on your C drive, and then paste that folder into there. You may need to provide administrator access to do that. But once that's done, if you go into the folder, and then find the DMX GUI program itself. And then you can right click on that and do copy. And then go back to your desktop or wherever you want the shortcut to be. So in my case, I'm gonna put it on the desktop, even though you can't see my desktop icons, but I've done paste shortcut. And this paste the shortcut, which Windows will find. And then you can just launch it from the start menu. So I hit the Windows key, type DEM, and there's my shortcut to DMX GUI. And then I can just run it on Windows from there. So. It's much easier than hunting around all over your hard drive and not knowing where things are. And then when you want to update it, you can just put the updated version in there and update the shortcut and you'll be in business. So on screen, you can see DMX GUI running. So this model selection, you can only do this when you actually load it for good technical reasons, apparently. So we're going to stick with the default model, but we'll look at loading models a bit later on. So you can just click load. 
So if you just want to get started on ripping some stems, then all you need to do is to go to file queue. You can add a file. So click add files. And then we're going to pick this track here. And then you can just click start separation. And this will provide you with the default stems that it rips, which in this case is four stems. But we'll see how to change that a little later on. Once you're done, you'll see DMUX GUI will create a separated folder. So here's the file we did. And in the same folder as that, you'll see a separated folder. And then in there, you get the model name. And then you get the name of the file that you ripped. And then you get the stems. So if you just want to do that, you can get started, get ripping straight away. But now we're going to look at a few of the options that DMUX GUI gives you. So the first thing is adding folders. So this is useful if you've got a lot of files to do. This is a really quick way to do it. So you can click add folder. I'm going to just do the album. So you can see in here, we've got here are all the tracks from that album. You can click that, adds all those really quickly. Let's see what it does with the JPEG file when we do that. But let's just start the separation. And if that's all you need to do across multiple tracks, again, this is much quicker than loading them as a separate project in things such as RipX Store and Specialize, which is what I was doing previously. So this is going to make certainly this kind of workflow much quicker for me. And as you can see, it's just skipped over the JPEG file. So that's pretty useful. I'd imagine it will just check for any audio file that it can read and work on those and then fail on the others, but it fails in a nice way. Also notice that it's writing the files while it's doing the next one. So it works pretty quickly. And in this case, the separated folder appears inside the folder that we chose. And then there's the model name and then all the tracks with all their individual files. Again, quick simple straightforward and you're in no doubt as to what belongs to what so that works pretty well for me so let's look at some of the options that here so generally the separation parameters you can probably experiment with them and one of the things is a device here so i can either use the acceleration on the gpu or i could use the cpu if i want to uh, slow things down i guess um we're not going to mess around with any of these feel free to experiment with them and see if you get different results but the save options here are useful, so particularly the file type. So you don't have to save in FLAC. You can save in WAV as well. So you could pick WAV here, and then you can pick, again, the depth. So often you're probably going to want to do this if your DAW can't import FLAX, for instance. The save file location is quite useful. So it gives you this ability to name them. So you can see it's putting in the model name, then the track, then the stem, then the extension. And it does give you some help here. So you've got those variables there which you can put in in here pretty much using all of them other than track x but you could use that in there as well so it could show that the original track was an mp3 etc that kind of thing this isn't something i've needed to mess with but it's nice to be able to do this particularly if you've got a lot to do and you want to name them in a particular way so the mixer page is really useful because by default, you will get just the stems that the model outputs. So in this case, we've got drums, bass, other and vocals as seen previously in the video. But we can also do some different ones here. So we can have minus drums or we could have no drums. So this is slightly different. The end result you might think would be the same, but because the model separation isn't perfect, they will probably be slightly different because this one for instance, minus drums, what it does is it takes the original and then it takes away the drum stem. So whatever it's extracted as a drums will be taken away. Whereas the no drums one doesn't use any of the original, it just uses the other stem. So let's say the drums here has picked up something else, then it won't work in the same way here, particularly because if the model doesn't totally extract everything, then this will be missing something. So this will be your reconstituted ones, whereas this will just be minus the drum. So your mileage will vary depending on what it picks up, etc. But you can easily pick all of these or none of them, etc. And you can also make your own mixes. So let's say you wanted a 
drummer's rehearsal mix, which had everything in, but with the drums at 50%. You can add that really easily. So what we'll do is add one here, and I'm going to call it drums 50. What we want is the bass at 100. So you can type the numbers in, or you can just use a slider here, and you can see we can go to 500%. So you can make something louder if you want. Uh, let's just type the numbers in. 100%, 100% of other, and 100% of vocals. But let's say we only wanted 50% drums. So the drummer can play along. If they need to, they can hear it at a lower volume. Say, I often have this with rehearsal things for people. Uh, so let's just put this at about 50%. Oh, we're not, there we go, bang on. So 50%, so this would give us a drums 50% mix with lower level drums in there so they can hear it, but they're not gonna be overwhelmed by it. So useful for creating all those kind of things. You can save these. There's presets here, so we could click a new preset, etc. It's It's useful to have all this in here because if this is the kind of thing you're doing a lot, maybe you've got tens, possibly even hundreds of tracks to do this too. Quick and easy to set these up and then you're in business. So nice to have that flexibility. Again, you can achieve this with things like RipX, but not in this automated way and not producing all of these in, in this much speed. This is much, much quicker. Now, model selection. So this is something where you click on this and you think, well, why can't I do this? The reason is apparently to do with programming of this, it's best to just start from fresh rather than trying to reload a model. So if you want to change models, you need to quit DMUX GUI and load it at the first screen because that's the only time you can actually change the model. So let's do that. And here we are on the model selection screen and you can see there's quite a lot. In fact, it goes below my screen capture area on here. Uh, I've not played with all of these, so obviously it's nice to have these, but the, the good thing is that it will download anything that's missing. So if we've got DMUX 6S here, you can see that one's already been downloaded for reasons because I'd already possibly downloaded it previously. Uh, we just click load. And the main change you'll see would be in the mixer. So here we can see we've got all of these different stems available. Let's just make this a little bit wider so we can see them. And you've got those six stems because this is a six stem model, as you'd imagine. And we've got all those combinations in there as well. So again, you can set up anything you want on those. By default, those will all get done. But we could do all of them here. Let's just load up the obligatory file again. So we're just going to add the same old file we've seen multiple times and just start that separation there. And notice how quick it is doing all the other mixes because it stores all these stems in memory and then does whatever it's going to do with them rather than doing the process multiple times. So once it's actually done the stem ripping, the file writing is fairly quick. And as we'd expect, under separated, we get the model name. And then here we can see all of those different stems it's created as web files because we saved that previously and with all of those particular stems ready to go. So you've got all the combinations and you can audition them and use the ones you want. So there you go, DMUX GUI. Simple, straightforward, kind of tool you really like because it does everything it needs to do. But it turns out actually it doesn't. The author is looking for funding to train more in-depth models. So one of the things he's talking about is a 10 stem model, which is certainly something I've not seen before. That would be pretty interesting. The problem with this is it's relatively expensive. So you need to hire a bunch of GPU time on a cloud service, upload a whole load of files, do the work, etc. So he's taking donations via the GitHub page which you can see, the link is in the description. Now, I have no affiliation with this. I've never met the man. I've just put in a bug report on it, which is now fixed. So I don't know whether he's using it for anything else, uh, but if you only send him a couple of dollars, you know, compared to the cost of things like RipX and Spectral Layers, if that's what you're using previously, it's not the end of the world. And if everybody watched this video, uh, sent him a dollar, I think we'd get some interesting models funded. So that would be a nice thing to do as well. I think it's important to reward developers of open source software because after all, most of the internet is built on it. And 
they aren't the people who are making the money. You know, he's he's not going to be buying a Ferrari or starting a space launch company with the money that people give him with GitHub donations. Anyway, as ever, hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please comment, like, and possibly even subscribe. We'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition. <laughs>